Hello friends, Matthew is here. Let me introduce my new product in this in-depth tutorial, DeForce Archmage. It includes 10 powerful scripts and a highly detailed user guide to help you get the most out of it. As you can see, this script's icon looks a bit different from the rest. This is Invoke DeForce, the core script of the DeForce Archmage suite. It launches your DeForce simulation and runs it twice as fast or even more. So how is this speed boost achieved? Through many optimizations, but one of the most important is strict filtering of simulation participants. You see, when you run a standard DeForce simulation in DAZ Studio, every single object in your scene is included by default. The figure, the bed, the wall, the door, the blinds, even items you can't see on screen. Invoke DeForce includes only the selected objects along with their wearables and parented items in the simulation. So if you want to simulate the dress and top worn by Helen, you only need to select Helen herself. If the interaction between the dress and the bed is important, just add the bed to the selection as well. If your scene contains DeForce wind nodes, they'll be added automatically. No need to select them manually. Let's launch the script. It runs smoothly, even in complex scenes, and opens a dialogue that gives you everything you need for a precise simulation. On the left side of the dialogue, you'll find simulation interval and simulation settings. You can either enter the simulation range manually or pick from your custom presets created in master settings. Just below that, you'll see presets for all the other simulation parameters. You can go with default settings, keep the current ones, or load a previously saved preset. Prefer to fine tune everything yourself? No problem. You can manually adjust each parameter. And to make things even easier, every setting comes with a built-in description to help you understand what it does and how to use it. Want to save your setup? Just click add new preset. Tweak your settings, and hit save. As you can see, your new preset now appears in the list. To update a preset, simply change the settings and click save. Need to remove an old one? That's just as easy. On the right side of the dialog, you'll find a full list of objects that can take part in the simulation. In this case, it includes Helen along with everything parented to her and the bed with all its children as well. A green check mark means the object will participate in the simulation. A red cross means it's excluded. As you can see, some items like eyes, mouth, and tears are excluded by default because they're listed in the exclusion list defined in master settings. Next, there's the bone icon. A green bone means all bones are included in the simulation. Yellow means some are excluded. Red means no bones are included so the object won't simulate. A gray bone means the object either has only one bone or no skeleton at all. Clicking the bone icon lets you manually choose which bones to exclude. The eye icon toggles whether the object is visible in the simulation. If your simulation interval is not set to current frame, you'll see an animation icon on the right for each object. We'll get to that shortly. The hand icon indicates an active smoothing modifier. In most cases, smoothing has no impact on the simulation result, but it can slow things down significantly. Clicking this icon lets you temporarily disable smoothing just during the simulation. The DF icon shows that the object has a dynamic DeForce modifier. With one glance, you'll know which objects are simulating cloth or hair. Clicking it gives you a status report about the object's simulation parameters and materials, helping you detect any potential problems. A red DF icon means the object's parameters prevent it from simulating. If freeze simulation is enabled, the icon is also marked blue. As you've probably guessed, the snowflake icon toggles freeze simulation. 
and the gear icon opens the D-Force wizard, which we'll cover later. All non-D-Force objects have a friction slider because their surface friction affects the simulation just like that of D-Force objects. By default, it's set to 40%, but you can adjust this as needed using Invoke D-Force. If D-Force wind nodes are present in the scene, they'll appear at the bottom of the list. You can tweak their wind strength right before the simulation. If strength is animated, this sets the initial value. Your selections and settings will be remembered the next time you launch Invoke D-Force. Now I'll press Launch Simulation while holding Control. This saves the changes without starting the simulation. As you can see, all settings were saved. Now you can simply hit Enter or click Launch Simulation. Each object can be assigned a temporary animation for its root transforms, applied only during simulation and cleared afterward. Once selected, the animation's parameters can be adjusted for your specific case. The key point here is, these animations apply relatively, not in absolute values. For example, here Y translate raises the object by 25 units, then returns it to its original position, regardless of where the object is in space. To create a custom animation, just animate the object directly in the timeline. For instance, let's create one where the object tilts 45 degrees on the Z-axis, then returns to its original pose. And on the Y-axis, it starts slightly lowered, rises, and finally comes back to the starting position. Done! Now launch Invoke DeForce, open the Animation dialog, and choose Create from Timeline. The reference frame is what makes the animation relative. It's usually the frame where the object returns to its original pose. The animation is now created. Let's clear everything here. Then apply our new animation. Everything works as expected. And after the simulation, nothing remains on the timeline. Heal simulation springs with a single click removes, or significantly speeds up, the spring recalculations before simulation for all selected objects. You can launch DeForce Wizard either directly from Invoke DeForce or as a standalone tool. It lets you create or remove a DeForce modifier, add or delete a DeForce weight node, and edit all DeForce parameters for the object and its materials, all from one convenient screen. At the top left of the list, you'll see the name of the currently selected object. The icons next to it work exactly the same as in Invoke DeForce. DF runs a quick DeForce diagnostic, the Snowflake toggles Freeze Simulation, and the Eye toggles Visibility in Simulation. On the right side, there's an edit icon. A yellow background means the entire object is selected, so any changes you make on the right will apply to all of its materials at once. If the object has more than one material, they'll be listed below. Each material has an eye icon to toggle its visibility in simulation. The color of the material name gives a quick visual cue about its dynamic strength. Red means it's set to 0%, and bright green means it's at 100%. In the top right corner, you'll find material presets for quick setup. Default, Silk, Cotton, Denim, 
elastic, and rigid. When you edit any parameter, you'll also see a tooltip with info and usage tips, so you always know exactly what you're adjusting. WindWizard is a handy tool for creating, editing, and removing DeForce Wind Nodes. Here, you'll see a list of all Wind Nodes in your scene, along with their Wind Strength values. If Wind Strength is animated, the displayed value will show the full range. When editing, you can choose from presets for quick configuration, and you can also animate Wind Strength directly from this interface. New wind nodes are automatically parented to an invisible camera, which makes it easier to adjust their direction and position. The initial direction of that camera and the wind node is set right here in the camera settings. With a single click, Morph Extractor converts the deforce simulation of all selected objects into morphs. This allows you to layer one simulation on top of another, compare simulations with different settings, adjust or animate the result, or simply move the simulation to frame zero to keep your timeline clean and organized. If you hold control, the morph will be created on frame zero. If you hold alt, the morph will be created but left inactive. Frame Shape Match lets you copy the result of a simulation from one frame to another while keeping the original simulation intact. Only the geometry changes caused by the deforce simulation will be copied. Pose changes and other morphs won't be included. This is especially useful when a simulated object starts to deform or break down near the end, or you simply need to tweak the simulation at a specific frame. Unlike Morph Extractor, DeForce Animator copies the entire animation of the simulation over a specified frame range. The result is a frame-by-frame -frame replica of the original DeForce simulation, perfect for optimizing performance, adjusting the simulation speed, exporting animations, layering multiple simulations, or quickly comparing results with different settings. Loopmaster creates a perfect loop by aligning the simulation on the first and last frames, making it possible to use DeForce simulations even in short looping animations. Depending on your master settings, Loopmaster can either perform this in one click or show a dialog for more control. Holding control will always force the dialog to appear regardless of your current settings. Remove Morphs deletes any morphs created by the Morph Extractor, Frame Shape Match, DeForce Animator, or Loop Master scripts. It's recommended to use this script to safely remove any morphs you no longer need, keeping your scene clean and optimized.
This is the central hub that controls how all the other scripts work. Each parameter is thoroughly explained in the user manual. Reading it is highly recommended. In addition, Master Settings lets you edit the default exclusion list, objects that should not be part of simulations, and define your own simulation interval presets to best match your workflow. When creating interval presets, you can use plain numbers or three special variables to define the current frame, the first frame of the timeline, and the last frame of the timeline. To add new items to the exclusions list, select them before launching Master Settings, then click Add Selected Objects to Exclusions. To remove an object from the list, simply click the cross icon next to it, and don't forget to save your changes. And that's just the beginning. With DeForce Archmage, you're not just running simulations, you're mastering them. From faster performance to unmatched control, from smart presets to powerful tools, everything is designed to make your creative process smoother, faster, and more fun. So go ahead, unleash your potential, shape your world, and become the DeForce Archmage.